Chancellor of the University, I shall now proceed with the conferment of an honorary degree. Would Peter Frank Haythorn Thate please come forward? The Vice Chancellor, Professor Pat Walsh, will read the citation. Chancellor, Peter Frank Haythorn-Thwaite is a distinguished and celebrated New Zealand industrial designer. His professional career spans over 40 years, during which he has been a leading contributor to design in this country through an extensive, widely praised creative output and long-standing involvement supporting New Zealand's design industry. Born and raised in Auckland, Peter Haythorn-Thwaite's early interest in graphic design and technology was encouraged by his family. He enrolled at the University of Auckland's Elam School of Fine Arts in 1962, graduating with a diploma in Fine Arts, honours, majoring in design. Inspired to study overseas by Ed Zagorski, an American industrial designer who was visiting New Zealand as a Fulbright scholar, Peter Haythorn-Thwaite became one of the first young New Zealanders to undertake postgraduate industrial design studies in the United States. He completed both a Bachelor and Masters of Fine Arts, majoring in industrial design at the University of Illinois, graduating in 1969. Upon graduating, he gained valuable commercial experience, particularly as a senior industrial designer at the pioneering firm Henry Dreyfus Associates in New York. He returned to New Zealand in 1971 to take up a position as lecturer in design at the University of Auckland. Since then, Peter Haythorn Thwaite has contributed significantly to the development of design as an academic discipline in this country. For many years, he lent his expertise to the Wellington School of Design, now part of Massey University, and in 2004 was appointed adjunct professor at Victoria University's School of Design. In this capacity, he has supported the school by sharing his knowledge and industry experience facilitating opportunities for students and assisting in the development of the school's design-led futures program. <coughs> Often working in collaboration with others, Peter Haythorn Thwaites' passion for acquiring knowledge has driven his prolific creative output, and he has created a number of successful businesses to bring his ideas to fruition. One such business, Artifacts Limited, designed, manufactured and marketed a range of office stationery and enjoyed worldwide commercial success becoming the first New Zealand company to have its products sold in the design store of New York's Museum of Modern Art. Peter Haythorn Thwaites' excellence as a designer has brought him the highest national and international recognition. In 2003, he won the Designers Institute of New Zealand John Britton Award. Four years later, in 2007, he received one of the world's most prestigious design accolades, a gold medal in the Industrial Designers Society of America's IDEA Awards for the Lomac keyboard design, which enables people with physical impairments to use computers more easily through the use of light sensor technology. Lomac was subsequently selected for the acclaimed 2008 <coughs> exhibition Design in the Elastic Mind and was the first design by a New Zealander selected for the Museum of Modern Art's internationally renowned permanent collection. As a leader in the national design sector, Peter Haythorn Thwaite helped establish the New Zealand Best Awards, a showcase of excellence in graphic, interactive, product and special design. And he has served twice as president of the Designers Institute of New Zealand. He has also been a member of its council for many years, and in 1995 was made a fellow of the Institute in honour of his distinguished service. He is also an international advisor to the Boston-based Design Management Institute. More recently, Peter Haythorn Thwaite has devoted considerable effort to building the design capability of New Zealand businesses. He is a mentor and coach for the New Zealand Trade and Enterprise Better by Design program, which he played a key role in developing and which has now been extended to four Australian states. Peter Haythorn Thwaite has produced some of New Zealand's most original, creative and outstanding industrial design. He is an inspirational figure who has, enriched, who has enriched the creative life of this country. Victoria University, an institution committed to the creative disciplines and which recognises design as a knowledge-based subject, is proud to recognise his immense contribution towards excellence in design. Chancellor, I have the honour to present to you Peter Frank Haythorn-Thwaite, 
Diploma in Fine Arts with Honours, Design, in the University of Auckland. Masters of Fine Arts in Industrial Design in the University of Illinois. Fellow of the Designers Institute of New Zealand. Adjunct Professor of Design at Victoria University of Wellington for the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa in this university. By the authority of Victoria University of Wellington, I, Ian McKinnon, Chancellor, now confer on Peter Frank Haythornthwaite the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa. It's now our pleasure to invite Peter Hay Thornthwaite to give the graduation address. Chancellor, Pro Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, heads and staff of the faculties, family and friends. It's rare for me to receive a phone call from Jakarta. But two months ago, the Vice Chancellor called me from there advising that the Council of Victoria University of Wellington wished to award me with an honorary degree of Doctor of Science. Would I accept? I'm thinking, is this imagination or reality? A Doctor of Science, a designer, there's an interesting connection. Yes, yes, I would be deeply honoured, I replied. I must admit, I felt emotional. Scientists would tell me that my sympathetic nervous system stressed and that the lacrimal gland was active. So here today, I am awed, deeply grateful, privileged to be the first designer at Victoria to be so honoured. Thank you to the University Council for opening your umbrella of scholarly enlightenment to include the design profession and to recognize me in this manner. I want to say that this recognition could not have happened but the support of my wife, Carol. She has empowered me to pursue my passion with liberty, nor could it be but for educators, professional peers, clients and family who have challenged and expanded my design comprehension and capabilities. Thank you to you all. Now, to the specialness of today, Gradua graduates graduating. For you, university has been a time of enlightenment. And at times like the book title on, on Michelangelo, <coughs> The Agony and the Ecstasy. It's been a time of self-doubts, yet the building of self. At times, uh, a scrimping and saving, but with any luck, some artful indulgence. You've had three, four, five and more years of intensive inquiry, of discovering and crafting the tools to enable you to prove your mettle. Now your marvelous journey begins. Yes, acknowledged, your horizon of potential is but partially revealed, but you have the binoculars through which to view and augment what is conceivable. So I add my congratulations to you graduates. Well done. If I can use the word bravo, fantastic. I'm very proud of you if I could say that. I also applaud your parents, partners, family and friends who have championed you on your way. Their encouragement, sustenance, 
and wherewithal has facilitated your success. They are the ones who have believed in you and stood by you. And I also salute your professors and university staff who have inspired, enabled, and challenged you. I want to share three things with you today, and I call them Take Time Twos. The first Take Time To is to dream. Goethe, the 18th and 19th century scientist, poet, writer, and philosopher said, dream no small dreams, for they have no power to move the hearts of men. Dreams transport us. They shape possibilities. They grip our mind and our spirit. They are the coxswains that steer us to realize our futures. In my college, in college, my dreams were motivated by my search to understand what was in the mind of great designers. Why was it that they created such wondrous solutions? I've dreamed of becoming such a person. I'm still working on it, I have to say. By dreaming of future possibilities, I had a realization that has driven me throughout my career. It was an epiphany. It apprehended me. It was a realization as to why I was created to design. It was only when my search and my dreams coalesced that my purpose became clear. I tell you this for one reason, that is, each of us has a special purpose in life, and to a significant degree, our ability to dream, to envisage, to conceive, enables us to find and accomplish that purpose. The university commune ferments and fertilizes dreams. However, once outside, it's all too easy for our dreams to be conditioned by context, to be subjugated by money and circumstances. It's all too easy to allow our dream ability to be snared by demands. When we fail to dream and to become less curious, we accept the status quo and to hope for less. Bob Gass captured the significance of dreaming when he wrote, dreamers are not always the most talented or best educated, just the ones who refuse to put brackets around their thinking or limit themselves to what others have done. Doing this requires courage, lots of it. On the heels of every dream, there's a demon of doubt. No sooner is your dream conceived that your mind is suddenly filled with all reasons why it will not work. And there will be those around you who will be quick to confirm those fears. In spite of that, you must forge ahead and dream. Otherwise, you'll spend the rest of your life fulfilling the dreams of others. Of course, there's a footnote. Your dreams will only move the hearts of men by being realized through conviction, tenacity, passion, and capability. The second take time to is to search for beauty. Life is too short not to seek for beauty. While beauty may defy, defy adequate description, there's a rightness when we experience it. Scientists may identify beauty in complexity or symmetry and simplicity. Software designers may talk a beautiful code so elegant and simple <coughs> that it overawes complex problems. Engineers can consider beauty in terms of efficiency, endurance, minimization, and practicality, and designers and architects may see beauty in refinement, appropriateness, meaningfulness, and detail. Whatever your stance, beauty stirs the soul. It uplifts. It creates kinship. Beauty asks of us, why am I surprising, delightful, inspirational, joyful, unforgettable? We observe beauty momentarily in rings authored by a pebble in a placid pond. We see it in nature's variegated pattern of leaves on a forest floor. We choose it as a small teapot that affectionately nestles into our hands. We create it by turning technology into an expedient and irreplaceable communications companion. Gaudi captured it in his splendid and praiseful Sagrada Familia, 
Basilica. In life's intensity, take time to quest for beauty. Yes, beauty demands discernment, judgment, perceptiveness, and meditation. But the reward is that it will enhance your fulfillment in life. The third take time to is that of enabling others. Again, I quote Goethe, if you treat an individual as if he were what he ought to be and could be, he will become what he ought to be and could be. The time you invest in other people's lives may be the very thing that enables them to become the persons they were destined to be. That investment requires commitment and compassion. It will mean caring to be there to support, encourage, critique, and guide. It may mean being there for the least likely to succeed and giving them the hope to achieve. In some ways, this take time to is the antithesis of striving for your own success, which of course you must do. But the surprising outcome is that in the, focus, in fo in the process of focusing on another person's potential, you will most likely become the person you ought and can be. So take time to dream big dreams that will move the hearts of men. Take time to engage in the search for beauty and take time to care enough to help others fulfill their calling. And I'd like to end with the words of that genius, Dr. Zeus. So be your name, Boxbaum or Bixby or Bray, or Mordecai Ali Van Allen O'Shea. You are off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way.